Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another pinball repair video for you this evening. This is a pretty cool little machine that somebody brought us. It's Gottlieb's Out of Sight. Or as I like to say, Out of Sight! Pinball machine. It's a two-player. Um, that we are going to go through and fix up for a gentleman. So... He has done a lot of the stuff on the play field already. He doesn't really want us to mess with the cosmetics much. He's cleaned it up. Got it looking pretty good. And it looks like a cool game. It's got a great back glass. Um, for what it is, you know. Check this out. So it still has the South Carolina tax sticker on it from 1977, which I would guess is not too long after the game was made. I don't know. Maybe this is early 70s. Um, I haven't looked up anything on it yet. But it's a two-player, which is a little unique. I always enjoy looking at these, how they decided to put the reels in the back box. So look at this. There's a one and a two right above each other, and they're kind of just set off to the left. Now, on a lot of the valley... Um, Solid, uh, solid state games, they always put them like this. You can take a Bally game and take that back glass out, which is one of the greatest back glasses ever, by the way, and everybody knows it. You can take that back glass out and put a Knight Rider back glass in there and it will line perfectly up. You can put a Matahari back glass in there, it'll fit right in. All the stuff was in the exact same spot, pretty much. Now, the lights in the back box were in different spots. So, where it says strikes and spares, they probably have the bulbs lining up with that. Whereas on Knight Rider, it may be more rounded or something. But, you know, they're all... I think it's all straight, but whatever. Um, so they would... The, the panel and behind it, the lights would be in different places. But the actual glass, the stuff was in the same spot. So look what they've done. One player, two player, three player, four player. Okay? And so then you got some kind of creative ones like this. This is a Sonic from uh, Spain. Um, it's a Spanish company. And so they did one, two, three, four. Just doing it a little different. Okay. And then we've got... I had a... Uh, I think we moved a Williams. Let me... I'm missing a game. Let me, go find, let me go find the game that I was looking at. We'll be right back. We had a space mission that the customers already picked up, which is a Williams, which is why I was going to show it. But this is a Chicago coin that we've recently done. One, two, three, four. That's pretty traditional. But look at this one. Williams Student Prince, one, two, three, four. So they just kind of did them different depending on which game it was. So my whole point is I like how they did the, I like how they laid it out. It's a little unique. It's right in the middle of the back glass where that makes the score kind of the, the center of attention. And uh, it, it allowed them to lay out the artwork a little different. So it's kind of supposed to be this kind of trippy vibe. Out of sight, man! So um, it by putting those right there, getting them kind of out of the way, it made it where they could make all the other art just laid out a little differently, right? So let's check out all the cool stuff on this. First of all, it says, a game of skill. Now, why does it say that? Are they bragging? No. They're trying not to get sued for it being a gambling device. That's why. <laughs> and then it says, it's more fun to compete. Now, why does it say that? It's because they're trying to get you to spend your quarter two at a time. If you get two people to play, you make twice as much money. All right. So let's see. It says, Gottlieb's out of sight. There's a date of 1974 on the back glass. Okay. And it's kind of, you know. And then you've got this kind of almost Spanish or Western or uh, uh, Arizona look <laughs> to some of the art, which is kind of cool. It reminds me of, uh, what's that? Uh, Spanish Eyes, the Spanish Eyes game that we had that we, that we worked on. It had something, of course it had a lot more of it, but it had that kind of look to it. Um, it also has the checkered thing here, which kind of gives me the idea of like the checkered flag at a race car, uh, at a, on a race car, I mean on a race. And then you have these checkered 
drop targets too, so I'm not completely sure why they did that. And then you have all of these women here in different colors. It's kind of how, you know, it's just a stylized thing. There was a back glass for a game called Now, N-O-W, that I had for a while. Uh, it's one of the first games I ever had that has a kind of similar vibe to it. Okay, so you got this cool art here with the chicks with the big hair. And then you got three girls up here that uh, I don't I don't even get what that's all about. That's kind of cool. Well, then they've got pigtails, and they've got you know tops on that almost look like swimsuits or something, but they're full body. Um, and then you've got the sun over here, and it looks like it's going hey hey hey, <laughs> and you've got these rockets flying off. You've got the, there's a whole, uh, looks like you're looking over the, the sun's looking over the horizon of the ocean or something, maybe. Um, and then you've got some more stuff bubbling up down here. And then you've got this interesting character over here. The woman with big crazy hair. Things going on in her, in her hair. Nice little outfit on. Got some kind of thing growing around her waist, maybe. <laughs> All in all, it's out of sight, man. It's really cool back glass. Looks great, and the um, it's got the kind of a, a little more traditional uh, stenciling on the side, although it's angular and kind of has the same um, swoopy artistic look to it. So just the, the the art and everything's pretty cool on it. All right, and on the play field, you've got. Some really cool plastics, more of the, the almost uh, Spanish or Indian um, Native American artwork here. Uh, lots of angular stuff on the play field. And then these kind of trippy plastics here. Those aren't faded, that's how that was designed. They almost look like rock posters or something from that era. I wouldn't know though. I was but a gleam in my dad's eye in 1974. Okay, folks, so we have propped up the play field. Oh, and if you don't know, I know some of our viewers uh, don't have pinball machines, don't work on them, they just enjoy the videos. There is a little prop rod inside the game that's on a hinge to hold it up. So the first thing I see, here is our first sign of, of trouble. Uh-huh, someone's installed a circuit breaker in one of the fuses. You know what that means. They're having some circuits break. Okay, we've got our schematics. Very valuable. This is all we need, people. That's all we're going to need. Um, some related shenanigans there. <clears throat> I can't tell what those are from. They don't look like they go to this game. But they're in this game. What's that all about? They look like... Yeah, they're threaded. So they look like something that would go on, like, for instance, this circuit breaker. <laughs> they don't, though. Let's see if it's broken. Doesn't appear to be. Okay, so another thing I'll point out to you. I've shown this on other videos. Here is the back of the coin door. See how it just looks bare? <laughs> and see how there's some stuff missing? The operator has removed all of the coin mechanisms and all of that stuff from this game. Now, why did they do that? It's because some of the operators were very paranoid that if they sold you a game that was functional to make money, that you'd put it back out on location and uh, be their competition. You might think they're, that's not what they did. That is what they did. <laughs> they sold it to someone for home use, and they took all the coin mechs and stuff off because they didn't want you to be able to put it on a location. They wanted to make it where it was permanently free play. I, uh, I worked for an operator, great guy, back in the day, and we had a bunch of jukeboxes that he wanted to sell. And he told me himself, remove all of the coin mechs and all of that stuff, so that they can't operate it on location. That's how these guys think, you know? So some operator sold this, and by the way, 
Uh, this game was in South Carolina in 1977. We're in South Carolina right now. This is a local game. This operator I'm talking about is a local guy. So, you know, if he was thinking that, other operators around uh, this area were probably thinking the same thing. So maybe that's just a regional thing, but this is kind of interesting. You don't see this too often. That's like water damage or something where there was like a drink there or something. I don't know what that's from. I don't, it's not, um, it, it's not screwed anything up or anything. I mean, it's not a problem. It's just interesting. I usually don't see any kind of, you'll see dirt or something on these boards, but you won't see that. I mean, I don't know what that would be from. Almost looks like water was dripping on it. So I just found this there. This is the tilt bob. It goes over here. Like a so. So they have that just right where if you shake the machine, it touches that metal plate and shorts you out. But you don't really need it better off without it because then you never tilt okay so that's the first thing the next thing that I see is I see a loose wire back there and I see some other wires that look like they've been messed with so I don't know I don't know see some issues so yeah so there's like some kind of water damage there and then it looks like there's some of it back there too it's almost like they something was spilled on it um, I'll show you another one. This is an old pitching bat that we're working on. It's got some stuff missing. And this one has some green right there. Well, that's because that's the color of the... It's been repainted. And so that's where they put a can of paint at some point. It leaked a little bit. But there's no water damage or anything. You just don't see that very often. Usually it looks just like this. It's just... There's brown areas where grease and stuff is... Oil is leaked. They sprayed WD-40 in it or something. But, uh, interesting. So we'll pull the play fit out here in a minute. We have a, a stepper unit down there. I guess that's a bonus unit or something. Uh, I see four relays down there. Three pop bumpers. A beautiful ten. Count them. Ten drop targets. Gotta love a got a drop target bank. Um, two kickers. A gate. And two flippers. A ball eject. Oh, there's another gate. Is that cool? Um, everything looks really clean, uh, except for whatever those wires are back there. So let me pull the play field out and uh, set it to the side. All right, so we've reached our first snag. I can't pull the play field out because they've added a wire to it. So they have added a wire to the flipper but it's just twisted around there. And then it circles and I tied it here. It goes under the chime unit. Up here and I tied it again. Then it goes down. They tied it again. <laughs> it circles around. And this is the... It's just tied around these. And then it runs up the loom. To this right switch. Why in the hell would they do that? That makes no sense. What is that switch? Did they Elvis this thing? Opens the gate. Oh, come on! I cheated! <laughs> come on, man! Come on, baby. Come on now. If there's a feature on the play field where you get a higher score, you can't... Come on, people. You can't put a... People. You can't put a wire on the... If they're... People, come on. <laughs> I'm trying to incorporate all of my favorite comedians into my routine. I'm trying to throw a little... Uh, um, uh, Lou Costello in there. <laughs> <laughs>
people, if you, if the, if the switch opens the gate, so the gate opens, right? And it makes it where you can't lose the ball out the right side. I mean, that's cool. But you, come on now, you can't rig that up to the, to the, you put it on the flipper button. Come on now. You can't do it where every time you hit the flipper, it opens the, come, come on now, people. I've had people complain that's getting annoying. Look, if it's annoying, you can go watch another channel. I'm having a good time. Come on now. We're trying to be entertaining. Um, oh, I had to talk to you about something else. I said it just a second ago. Everything looks pretty clean. That's what I said. I don't mean clean as in let's eat dinner off of the wood. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about I had somebody say, oh, it's filthy. Your, your, your view of clean and mine are different. Yeah, they are. Okay. When I say clean, I'm talking about look at this, look at this score motor. That's how it's shipped from the factory. Nothing's hacked on it. It's clean. Okay. Even this hack here where they added the wire, they did it clean. They didn't cut anything. They just twisted a wire around it. They didn't even solder it. They twisted a wire around it. They ran it along some wires. And then they put it up here. Now, that part is not that clean. Okay? So when I say it looks pretty clean, I'm talking about like this. Look at this. Look how... Now, if you're, if you're just not into this stuff, you're not into it. Okay, but some, a lot of you are into it. I know you are because I've talked to you about it. Look at the beauty of this. Look how clean this looks. Okay, it's got grease and dirt and stuff all over, but look what's going on. You've got all of the original wiring. Some of it's even nylon covered. Some of it's cloth covered. You can make out the colors usually, or pretty much. Uh, the All of the blades are still kind of straight. Everything's right where it goes. It comes down. They've got it tied with this old old school uh, wax line or whatever. It's still even laid out exactly how they had it. That's a beautiful thing. Look how nice that is. From the 70s and it's still exactly how it was. It's clean, right? That's all I'm saying. So I'm saying it looks pretty clean. It doesn't look like they've hacked it up, screwed it all up, other than the one wire which we'll forgive him of. I need to talk to the customer and see if he wants us to leave that in there. Um, I mean, I know what all y'all are saying. All y'all are saying, get rid of it. I hear you. I hear you. I heard you. Bob, I heard you. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I think I'll take that loose anyway. The hell with it. And uh, we can put it back later. I've got Viddy... I've got video evidence of it, right? Because i got to get that play foot out of there so we can work on the stuff in the bottom. Took that out. So, there is our other stain. That's interesting. And there's another one here. Hmm. I don't know. Here we have another wire. But it's not hooked up to anything. So it was laying over there. I don't know, but you know what I want to do? I'm going to remove it. I can't read that. It says something about value bonus unit relay. We're taking it off, people. I could cut it, but I don't have cutters here. Voila. That's all I see. Uh, there's a Q-tip that we we'll probably use it to clean something, and then there's a piece of a sponge. They may have been cleaning contacts with that. The score motor looks a little bit sparse. There's not that much on it. It's only got four. That's about, I think that's what they usually have, though, isn't it? Yeah, I'm used to working on that pitching bat that we're working on. It's got six on it, I think, but it's a Williams. Okay, um, everything looks cool. It's all good. And there's not much here, so. All right, let's look in the back box, see what we got going on back there. All right. So we've got our replay unit here. Fairly typical. 
But of course, that won't really be used because they've set it on free play. There's no coin mix. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how they pulled that off. And then we've got three relays and a, uh, a little stepper unit. So the stepper unit is probably like a match unit. And then the relays are probably 1 point, 10 point, 100 point. Maybe. And this is the player unit. On these two players, they do this. So they have these switch stacks up here. And basically, this thing will reset. And I believe these, some of these switches up here act as the reset um, for the score reels whenever the game starts. And eventually, this gets back to where it goes and stops in its place. But it actually only moves one direction. It's a heck of a little piece of work, really. So that's ball two, ball three, ball four, ball five, ball six, ball seven, ball eight, ball nine, ball ten, maybe if you're playing a two-player five-ball game. And then it goes into reset. And while it's doing that, as it goes around, you'll see these see the switches going up and down. So there's cams that make it do certain things as it goes. Okay, and uh, don't they call these the... Oh, no, that's not them. Some of them they call the Decagon score reels, but this isn't them because these are the round ones. Well, it does say Decagon unit, but the reels are round. But it'll be all right, people. Don't worry about it. All of that looks clean. Um... Again, it looks like everything's in order in place. Uh, I don't see any problems. So, first thing we're going to do, we're going to start on all of this. So I'm going to go get the vacuum cleaner. We're going to clean it up a little bit, and I'm going to uh, get some of the extra screws and all that stuff that I find out of there and get it where there's nothing loose uh, wallowing around in there, and we'll see how uh, tidy we can get it. All right, so we vacuumed it out, got all the extracurricular stuff out of there. It looks like some mice may have been having a little little time in here. That might be what that is that I couldn't tell. I don't know, but I've seen uh, mouse urine before, and it usually don't look like that. So I don't know. I think maybe it was some kind of cleaner. Because, look, you can almost see where there was a can sitting there. I mean, obviously, there was something sitting there. And then this, look, it looks like maybe an oil bottle. That's my guess. Okay, but it doesn't matter though. It's just interesting to me. Probably not to you. Okay, so now I have to take all these relays out. So I'm going to take out one of these relays at a time. And I'm going to clean the little... The little... Uh, contact on it. So what I just did while you were watching is I took the hairpin clip out of the back. Now they call this a hairpin clip. You know, I don't know why they call that a hairpin pin clip. Okay, uh, moving right along. You can see on the relays, now these are the Gottlieb relays, so they are the little tiny ones. They don't have a big throw. So whenever you're testing them, basically you're going to see if the switch looks like it's doing what it should do. Now, you can grab it up here, but what happens is sometimes if you're pushing from over here, that's not really how the machine does it. I always kind of grab it down here where I can just barely kind of do it. This one's not a great example, but on some of them, this part moves. So if you grab it up here and do it, you're not really representing how far the coil will move it. So this coil, when it comes on, it's a magnet. It pulls this down. And it buzzes a little bit. Sometimes if the spring isn't adjusted right or something, and it's fighting it, it'll go... Okay, so uh, the contact here, as you can see, look at that, look at this, doing it with both hands today, people. Now when this opens, see the top blade, which is the shorter of the two blades? See how the top blade is also mo moving? 
that's what you want. You want to make sure that it's moving through the contact. So basically the bottom contact is pushing against it with such force that it moves it a little bit. Now you can see at a glance, you can't really see that, but if you get real close and pay attention, you can see it. So I'm gonna clean all those contacts with a little small file, a little flat file. Uh, you don't wanna use something that's real uh, aggressive that's gonna eat away all of the contact but you want to use something that can clean it. Now they used to back in the day just use a little piece of a business card or something like that. But back in the day it was a long time ago and there's a lot of crud on these so I use a little tiny file but I don't use a, a crazy one. I don't want it to eat away all of the contact. I just want it to clean the dirt off of it and not file away all of the metal off of it. So that's what I want to do. So I'm going to go through and clean all of those. Now that one you see it's arranged in such a way that whenever it pulls in it opens. So it's clearly closed now and then when it pulls in it opens well if you run across one that is clearly open now when the relay pulls in it should close now what does this relay do that we're looking at hell if I know it's not even labeled the labels missing but it doesn't really matter what it does right it'll matter whenever we need to fix it but right now we're doing maintenance on it we're cleaning it right so it doesn't really matter so if it, it's obviously closed, and when you pull the relay in, it opens. So is that the correct uh, function of it? Yeah, it has to be, because what else could it be? If it's closed, and you pull the relay in, and it stays closed, well, that ain't right. Why would they need to the relay? They could just connect the two wires together. They wouldn't even need to switch. Or if it's open, and when you pull the relay in, it stays open, well, that ain't right. Or they wouldn't need the switch. They wouldn't need the relay. So it has to transfer state. So it's closed right now and it's opening whenever the relay pulls in. That's all you need to know. So some of them will be open and they will close when the relay pulls in. So that's fine too. And then some of them will have three blades and it'll be closed one way and then when the relay pulls in that one will open and it'll close the other way and vice versa. So that's all you're doing. You're just going around and making sure all of the switches change state when the relay pulls in. Now if it's off just a little bit but you think it's still touching but maybe it's not moving it as far as you think it should, just leave it alone. If you if you try to micro adjust every switch, you will screw this thing up. You'll have 20 things out of adjustment, so don't do it. But if you see one where it's open and it clearly stays open even after the uh, relay throws, then you know, go ahead and adjust it. And you adjust it by just bending the smaller of the two blades. So um, I'm gonna go through and clean them. If I see anything else weird, I will show it to you, but I already showed you the uh, the, the two wires that we found in it. Okay, folks, I went through each one of them. I didn't find anything weird going on with any of these. Uh, I did find an extra hairpin clip that was stuck here. So I didn't have to use that one over there. So I've got an extra one. Okay, so now we're going to work on the relay bank. So basically there is this entire row of relays here that get reset at some point by this big coil pulling in, which... Uh, pushes them all, all back up to the uh, reset position. And then they can all trip too. So, you know, at certain points they trip. Okay. So it's the same thing. You have to go through and clean all of these. This one actually is too. You have to go through and clean all of the switches. Some are closed, some are open, and some are make and break. So, you know, back and forth. But as I'm looking at it, this fourth relay, which is the game over relay, has a make or break switch right here on the top. I can't figure out if it's screwed up or not, so you tell me. Okay, so look, I'm, I'm, this big blade is in the middle. Now look at the top blade, this smaller one. See how when I'm barely moving it, that top blade's moving too? So I'm pushing down on the blade. And it's moving the top one. And then look at the bottom blade. It's also moving it. So basically all three of those are touching. So that's the kind of stuff you're looking for. And if you notice, that is the blade that's right here whenever this uh, folds down. and um, The little... This, the little wing nut tightens it up. That blade is actually right here in the front, so it's the closest one to the coin door. Those are the most likely to get screwed up, the ones in the front or the ones on the top. 
uh, you hit them with a piece of paper or something when you're putting the manual back in the game or whatever. So that one is smashed together. So what I'm going to do is we're going to look in the schematics where the game over relay is and see there's a make or break switch on that and see what it what does it do. Okay, so looking through our nice original schematics, if you come over here, the game over relay is QB, is what they call it. And if you look around and just look everywhere for QB, one of the things that it's used for is there is a make or break switch with a black and red wire being switched back and forth between a slate wire and a blue and white wire. Okay, and so what they do is if it's one way, it says the game over light is on. If it's the other way, it energizes all the ball and play lights. So basically what that would do is if you, uh, if you, uh, as you were playing the game, if that hadn't tripped, um, the ball and play light and the game over light would be on or vice versa. It may have been at the end of a game, the ball and play light would stay on or the game while the game over light was on. So not that big of a deal, really. Okay, so I cleaned all of those switches and that one switch there, you can see it where it's on the front. So you can see what had happened. Basically, it got smashed. So if that were to get bent like that, that's how it was. So now we've got it where it's touching the top one, right? And then if the thing trips, now it's touching the bottom one. Okay? So that's what you want. All right. And the other ones all seem fine, but I may have missed one. We'll find out later. <laughs> And then finally, moving on, we have the beautiful score motor. I don't have, you know, a lot of people have trouble out of these score motors. I don't usually have that much trouble out of them, knock on wood. It's a motor, so there's not much to service. You put a little bit of oil on the, uh, there's a little oil pad on the bottom of here. Uh, and then you just clean the switches. So that's what I usually do and see if any of them are bent. If one's bent, it's almost always one of the ones on the edge, like we were just talking about with that. This looks a little hokey here, this top one. So, you know, you don't even need to know what they do, but you see this one lone switch here that as this post comes around, it's going to slide up this, which is going to push those together. And so it's a little close, but they are, in fact, not touching. So what appears to be going on is that this has been bent. See how it's kind of mangled up there? So this inside one should be out a little bit more. And as this goes along, it will make it push, right? So as this turns, it's going to get to here. It rides up that, makes the switch close at just the right time, and then lets go of it. And you get the nice boing, boing, boing. All right, so i got to clean all those switches. And that's like, that's kind of all there is on the mech board. We haven't done anything with the chimes yet, but I kind of want to hear them first, right? Um, so I'll finish that up and uh, we'll be ready to kind of slide the play field back in here. Okay, so I have put the play field back up in it. But before we plug it in, we need to clean these Jones plugs. These things, look how filthy they are. Now, do you honestly think that's going to conduct electricity? Look at that. It might, but look at that. It needs some work, folks. So, we're going to clean them up. Now, you can use all kinds of things. What I'm going to use today is simply some low-grit sandpaper. This is 220 grit, but you can use whatever you want. So, I'm going to shine up these posts. Um, we also have these little rust erasers we use sometimes. I can't find what I did with it, though. <laughs> um, so we're just going to clean all that up so that it makes good contact uh, with the Jones plugs where it plugs in. If you look, they actually use those all over the play field. So there's also some little jumpers here. It's the same thing. This is your special frequency adjustment. Uh, here's our wire that we were messing with earlier. I need to get that out of the way. Uh, and then this here, this is like a, usually that's a match unit. Sometimes they just use it for some kind of uh, 
Um, it may be for the bonus ladder or something. I don't know. We'll figure that out whenever we're working through the play field. But uh, we'll try to start it here in a minute. But it looks like this stepping unit isn't the greatest. This, whenever it pulls in, should move that wheel up. It doesn't appear to have the ability to do that right now. This one moves the wheel back the other way. But this one is supposed to step it up. And it's all screwed up. So that needs to be rebuilt. Uh, so, you know, we just need to go through everything. So we've went through all of the relays in the bottom of the cabinet. We went through the relay bank. We went through the score motor. Now we're going to go through these Jones plugs. Uh, there's also some Jones plugs that come from the mech board and plug in the back of the head. We'll clean those up as well. Okay, so that's more conductive to energy. Now the female part of the Jones plugs, we'll just look at this one. You can clean um, with a bore brush. People have told me you can use pipe cleaner. I don't think they're the right size, but it's something similar to the pipe cleaner that Google won't let me talk about much. People have said, I can't believe you can't talk about that in your videos. Well, you can talk about it, but uh, the videos are monetized. So they, uh, if your video is not monetized, Google does not promote it at all. By Google, I mean YouTube. They don't promote it at all. So in other words, other people can't see your video, even to the point where if the video is demonetized, it doesn't show up in searches. So uh, your own little bubble can still see it. But if you talk about something they don't want you to talk about, they will not spread your video around to where you get fresh people watching it and things like that. And it's just one of the limitations of having to work on YouTube. Um, so we can't talk about certain things. Now I could go ahead and say the word, but if I do that... They're counting people, you know what I mean? There's an artificial intelligence. If the whole video was about a certain subject, um, you are ranked farther down. If the video doesn't say anything about that, you're ranked farther up. So it's just how it is. Okay, so, uh, oh, so what I'm saying is there is a special tool that you use to clean uh, the bore of things that go, psh, 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 right? Um, like on Space Invaders, where you have the little guy at the bottom and then there's the 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 aliens at the top and the little guy is you know trying to defend himself from the aliens at the top with his uh, uh I can't even say the amendment <laughs> so uh you uh it's one of those you hold it like this uh if you've been watching uh gangster movies uh, so there's this little tool that cleans the bore of a, a magic dog, and if you uh, if you want some of those, you can check them out on our website. Go to lionsarcade.com, and we have a parts page, and on our parts page, we have links to a bunch of the tools and stuff we use whenever we're working on things, and uh, uh, if there's anything on there that you like, you can check it out. They'll take you to links that are on Amazon. Once you go to those links on Amazon, anything you buy on Amazon gives us a tip. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. Okay, so uh, I'm going to plug this back in and also do the ones that plug into the back box. And then we'll see if it even starts up. Okay, I'm cleaning these up in the back. Let me show you something that... That's my fire marshal bill impersonation. Let me show you something uh, that is easy to mess up. If you look, both of these are exactly the same size. So you, you could put one there and one there. And that's wrong. Now, a lot of times people have marked the end. So you'll, you'll get one and there'll be like green paint on this post and green paint uh, on the Jones plugs telling you that that one goes there. But that's not how they originally came. So it depends on the game. Some of them aren't like this. Some of them, the, the plugs are different sizes. But this particular one, they just happen to be the exact same size. Which means you could plug it in backwards. Now, if you plugged it in backwards, what would happen? It might blow fuses. Remember, this one has the circuit breaker in the front. Where apparently something's been blowing fuses. Uh, it wouldn't work. Remember, this one's in the shop for repair as we speak. I'm not saying that's what happened, but it could be what happened. So how do you... How do you tell which way they go? Well, you just check the wire colors. They pretty much always match. 
So you've got a blue wire here, an orange wire here, and like a white wire here. Those don't match any of those. That's not right. And then you have an open wire here. If you were to swap them, well now your open wire, there is a wire missing there, so that seems to line up, doesn't it? Okay, and then you've got a red wire going to a red wire, a uh, black and red going to a black and something like red. And uh, over here, you've got different colors, but if you, if you look, all of these are faded. That's just kind of how they do. But if you look, that's yellow and green, it appears, at the end there. Yellow and green, and if you follow it back till you get back to where it's a little cleaner, it does appear to be yellow and green. So the giveaway on this one is that one wire that's missing. So you got to be careful about that, um, which is one of the reasons I just go slow. If you go slow, you make less mistakes. A lot of this stuff, I don't really know. I haven't fit, like I've never worked on this particular game, but I just go slow and methodic and think about it as I go. So a lot of these videos, one of the reasons they're so lengthy is because I'm just thinking about what I'm doing out loud. All right? So that's how you can fix yours too. Okay. All right. So we've got everything plugged in. I'm going to try to turn it on and see if we get any kind of action at all. All right, folks, so we plugged it up. Put the play field back down where it goes. Have it all plugged in. It has 600 points on it. So that is our clue. That might be worth remembering. My, what I think is going to happen... Apron's a little loose. What I think is going to happen is that that bonus unit can't reset, so the thing can't start. That's what I think. Okay, so it cycled something back there, probably the player unit. Remember we were back there messing with that? Uh, it got to where it says tilt, and it says game over up there at the top. That's probably what it's supposed to do. We have nothing on the play field. Let's see if we can start a game. Out of sight! I should have had the ball in it. Bam! There it is. Okay, it says one player, and we're on ball two. Now, obviously, it's not... Obviously, it's not ready to go. We're just... Uh, Seeing where we're at at the moment. Ball landed back in the out hole. And it's just sitting there. And we were... Hmm. That was scoring on player two. Alright, so we still got issues. But hey, it's at least trying to do something. So, uh... That'll give us, that'll give us a, a good little start. We still have to do the underside of the play field. But still do the back of the back box. And then we have to troubleshoot the thing. So... We'll do that on the next video. So I hope you enjoyed it so far. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it. This game so far is out of sight, in my opinion. And uh, we'll join you next time when we work on it just a little bit more. Hey, did you know that my brother has a channel here on YouTube? It's called the My Brother Donnie channel. If you enjoy our channel, you may enjoy his. Go check it out. The link is down below. I'm usually over there having fun with him, getting into all kinds of crazy shenanigans. And uh, we will see you next time whenever we work on this one. Hope you enjoyed it.